Okay, quiz 12.4 uh, has to do with solids and crystal structure. Um, this first question is to classify the following solids in as many ways as you can. So a quartz crystal, first of all, is crystalline. Uh, that's implied by the name, but also if you look at a quartz crystal found in nature, it'll often have flat, faceted faces. Um, that is a result of the uh, microscopic ordered structure being imprinted on a macroscopic scale. And then uh, quartz crystal is a covalent network solid. Um, and uh, it's just an example given in the book of a covalent network solid. I don't think it's um, necessarily obvious um, uh, whether that would be ionic or covalent bonds uh, based on the positions in the periodic table of uh, uh, silicon and oxygen, but um, it, it is a covalent bonding network in quartz. Next we have uh, naphthalene. You can look up naphthalene. It's an organic molecule uh, uh, and it is crystalline. So um, naphthalene molecules will uh, stack in an orderly crystalline fashion. Um, and it is a molecular solid. Uh, the naphthalene molecules themselves have discrete boundaries. There are covalent bonds within a naphthalene molecule and intermolecular forces between the naphthalene molecules. So that is molecular. Aluminum foil is crystalline. Metals are crystalline. Um, and it's a metallic bond. Um, uh, all metals involved there. It, even if it's uh, not pure aluminum, maybe it's an alloy of aluminum, it's still all metals. Uh, glass is amorphous. We can tell that because glass will soften over a wide range of temperatures instead of just having a, a melting point where it immediately turns to liquid. Um, and uh, so glass is amorphous and then actually it's kind of difficult to classify glass. There is a mixture of ionic interactions and covalent interactions so we'll just leave that blank as far as what um, what type of forces are holding glass together. But it is amorphous. And then finally, iron three oxide. This is crystalline and it is ionic. Ionic compounds will always form some sort of uh, regular crystalline lattice. And so iron three oxide is an ionic crystalline solid. Okay, so let's move on down here to um, question two. We're going to need a lot of board space, but I think we can fit it all on here. Um, so uh, question two says, at room temperature, iron has a body-centered cubic structure. And iron atoms have a radius of 126 picometers. Let's give the coordination number of iron atoms. So for a body-centered uh, cubic structure, uh, the coordination number is 8 uh, and that's just for all body centered cubic um, and then uh, we're supposed to find the length of an edge of a unit cell for body centered cubic L is equal to um, 4 over square root of 3 times R uh, and so the 4 over square root of 3 will be multiplied by the uh, 126 picometers, 126 picometers that is given as the atomic radius of iron. And this is going to give a, a unit cell edge length of 291 picometers. Now to make uh, the next step a little bit easier, we can convert this into centimeters. That would be 2.91 times 10 to the negative eighth centimeters. And that's just to help us with the next step. Uh, estimate the density of iron metal. Uh, so density is mass over volume. So we'll find the mass of a single unit cell divided by the volume of a single unit cell. With a body-centered cubic um, uh, structure, there will be a total of two atoms within the unit cell. And the atomic weight of iron is 55 
0.845 grams per mole. And then we don't have a we don't have two moles of iron atoms, we have just two iron atoms. So we've got to get rid of this mole. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That will give us uh, uh, number of individual iron atoms. And then what is the volume? Well, we've got that length, 2.91 times 10 to the negative 8 centimeters. And the unit cell is a cube, so length times width times height will just be that number cubed. Now all of this you can just put into your calculator, and we'll end up with a density equal to 7.53 grams per centimeter cubed. I want to point out that doesn't match the observed value that is given here. Um, I have double and triple checked this and I don't know where my mistake is. Um, I've tried using the same um, uh, atomic radius and, oh, but with a simple cubic or with a face centered cubic and they give densities that are even further from the observed value. So I, I honestly don't know what exactly is going on here. Uh, but this is the answer that I kind of get repeatedly when I try it over and over again. Um, and it is close, at least, to that observed value. Um, so that is question two. Now let's go on to question three, uh, which has to do with lead. So lead has a face-centered cubic structure. And we measure its density of 11.34 grams per cubic centimeter. And we'll ask the same sorts of questions here for the lead. What is the coordination number for a face-centered cubic uh, structure? Um, that is 12. That's a maximum number of neighbors in all of our unit cells. And then uh, what is the edge length? That edge length is going to equal the square root of 8 times r, the face centered cubic. And um, we'll just have to leave it at that for now because we don't know the radius. Um, uh, so that's just how we'll leave it for now. And then uh, estimate the radius based on this density. Again, we'll look at the density of a single unit cell, d equals m over v. Only this time, uh, uh, it's the volume that we don't know and the density that we do know. So uh, we'll say uh, 7.53, oh, sorry, looked at the wrong place. <laughs> uh, we'll say 11.34 grams per cubic centimeter is going to equal, what's the volume? Well, that'll be the length cubed, whatever that length is. Um, and then uh, for a face-centered cubic structure, there will be four atoms per unit cell. The atomic weight of lead is 207.2 grams per mole. And again, we'll need to say one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd get rid of the moles in there. Um, so what we'll do is put the L cubed over here, 11.34 over there, um, and uh, solve that. So L cubed is going to equal 1.214 times 10 to the negative 22nd centimeters cubed. That is the volume of a unit cell. We can cube root both sides now. And we'll get uh, the edge length itself. Uh, and that's going to be 4.95 4 times 10 to the negative 8 centimeters. And uh, we'll typically deal with picometers for uh, atomic scales, and so we'll change this into 495 picometers. 
And now we can kind of put the answer up here. 495 picometers is a unit cell's edge length. And we can use this relationship now to solve for R. R is going to equal 495 picometers divided by the square root of 8. And this gives us 175 picometers. And this time it is consistent with uh, the observed uh, uh, atomic radius that you can uh, look up in tables. So 175 picometers.